360. Again, today we're going to be discussing another topic, and this has to do with um, skilled nursing care rehab. So normally when a patient gets discharged from the nursing home, I mean, up in the hospital, they normally end up in a nursing home, a skilled nursing facility, something like this. So um, when the patient get, um, get into the nursing home, normally within 72 hours, we have to evaluate the patient. So normally the physical therapy, the occupational therapy, and the speech therapy will go in, screen the patient to see if the patient is appropriate for rehab. Then if the patient you know, is appropriate, appropriate for rehab, so normally um, they will assess the patient, evaluate the patient, um, you know, determine what the patient is capable of doing and what the patient cannot do. And then also, they set goals for the patient. So normally they will look at the patient prior level of function. Uh, what was this patient doing before, prior to coming to this facility or prior to going to the hospital? And then they will set their goal um, accordingly. So normally if the patient a, uh, condition is worse, you know, they will set a short-term goal and then also a long-term goal. So the short-term goal, they will focus on little things to get the patient to that level. So let's just say, for example, you know, a baby, when the baby is born, the number one thing the baby will start doing is that it will start crying, and then from there it will start standing, and then from there it will start walking, so things like that. So when it comes to the short-term goal would be, you know, to learn how to crawl, and then from there the long-term goal perhaps would be um, to, to be able to walk. So, but you have to follow those steps. So you have to be able to crawl, stand, and then walk. So normally, uh, the evaluating therapist will assess the patient and determine what the patient is capable of doing at that moment. And then they will set the goals accordingly. And then thereafter, you know, we will start treating the patient. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna show you the different equipment in, uh, in a skilled nursing facility. So we have a lot of equipment here today. I'm just going to go around, show you some of those equipment that we normally use to get patients to our power level of function, okay? So just be with me in a moment, and we're going to go around. So anyway, so welcome back again, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like walk you, uh, walk you guys around and show you guys the different equipment that we have in one of our typical gym in the school nursing facility. So right over here, I'm going to show you this wheelchair. So this is a typical wheelchair. When a patient comes, when we assess the patient, if the patient is not capable of uh, walking independently by, the, you know, by themselves, we normally give them a wheelchair, something like this. So the patient will sit in this wheelchair. So this will help them, you know, with mobility, move them around the facility, transport them from their room you know, to the gym and things like that. So this is a typical wheelchair, okay? So this wheelchair, you can fold this wheelchair, and you can open it up, right? as you can see. So, that, so that's one of our typical uh, equipment that we have uh, in the rehab. And then also we have this kind of walker. So this is a very high level walker actually. <clears throat> I'm gonna take you over there and I will show you uh, one of our typical walk, you know, our typical walker. But this is a, um, a real little walker that we normally give to patients at a high level. All right, and then this walker, normally what we normally do is that we have, you know, like a bag under there for the patient to put things in there for themselves, all right? So that's it with that. And then the next thing also, if we have patients that are going back home, you know, we normally, uh, you know, teach them how to cook. So we normally bring them here, we teach them how to cook, we normally teach them how to put the stove on, how to cut the stove off you know, how to wash the dishes and things like that, and the same time to put the water on, put the water off, and things like that. So merely occupational therapy is the one that normally kind of like, you know, work with the patient on that, all right? So that's it with that. And then also we have this piece of equipment right here. So this is a, a parallel bar. If the patient cannot walk by themselves independently, if they cannot walk by themselves, so what we normally do is that we, we put them into this uh, parallel bar, while the patient is sitting in this wheelchair. So let's say, for example, this is a very typical wheelchair, okay? So the patient is sitting in here. So what we normally do here is that, you know, we have the patient sitting here, we bring him, you know, all the way up here. And you can come closer. So we put him in here, and we, and we normally make sure we lock the wheelchair. The wheelchair is locked, okay? And we teach the patient how to spin it. Uh, in this parallel bar. A patient that cannot stand up by themselves, 
and no one will help them all the days and they will stand up in the power of God like this. Alright, so that's the power of God. So and then also, so then also we have this piece of equipment here. So let's say for patient that cannot stand up by themselves. So we want to have this piece of equipment. You know, we'll bring them up here. And we have this here. You know, normally what we'll do is that we'll put the patient leg in this, like that. Put their leg in this. And then we see them up. Right there. We see them up. And then the patient can move around. You see what I'm doing? And then when the patient can stand up here, and we can have a ball like this. We can have a ball like this. Throw it to the patient in every direction. And then we'll move around. Okay? And the patient will move around. Just like that. So for patients that don't have a good balance, so that's what we normally do. And then also right over there, there we normally do our documentation. So, you know, you can see the computers <coughs> right there. So, when, so now that we see the patient, we have to document on what we do with the patient. The patient progress, the patient limitation, we document all of that. And then, you know, we document that into the computer. And so on. Now, right over here, you can come here. So over here, there's a therapeutic mat. So we normally use this mat to teach patients how to transfer from the bed onto the wheelchair. And then also onto this mat. And normally what we'll do is that. Normally what we we'll also do is that we'll have the patient lay down like right that. You know, we do, you know, we do some exercise, a lot of things. The patient can hold this ball, get up, throw this ball. You know, a lot of therapeutic activity we can do that with this, okay? Okay, then the next thing, the next piece of equipment, very, very important equipment that I want to show you is this machine right here. So this is the ultrasound machine and also an e-stamp. It's a combination, all right? So this is the ultrasound here. So let's say, for example, a patient has, you know, pain, you know, in their knee. So what we normally do is that we put the gel on, put the gel on, and then we just put this, uh, we set this machine to whatever program that we wanted to, and then we just do the ultrasound, you know, what the patient need. All right, and we do that. And then also, if the patient has, you know, muscle stiffness, you know, things like that, we also, you know, use it for that. The most important part of this machine that I really like is the e stem. The e stem is very, very important. So let's say, for example, a patient has a stroke. <clears throat> if a patient has a stroke, you can program this machine to move the patient leg. Extension, flexion, extension. And this machine also is, uh, is also capable of moving the patient or uh, leg in whatever direction you want it to be moved. So that's the importance of this. And uh, it also stimulates the muscle for the muscle to start working again. Very, very important piece of equipment. So I just want to show you guys that. All right. Then the next machine we have here, <clears throat> all right, but before I go there, <clears throat> so right over here, this uh, meaning for occupational therapy, then, then the mother use this type of uh, tools to, to teach the patient how to do certain things. So let's say, for example, you know, this patient can have stand up to work for themselves. So normally what the occupational therapy will do here is that, uh, let me show you this. What we would normally do here is that we have something like this, all right? The patient will stand up, and believe me or not, when you're sick or when you have injury, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. So they will stand the patient up right here. The patient will stand up, and they do some things like that. You might not understand this until maybe you are sick. When you are sick, you are, so most of the time you can even stand up for one minute or you can even do some little things but when you are, you know, when you are sick, you know, then of course you understand but this is what normally, you know, the therapy do and, and things like that. And also like this, so we normally use this to stimulate the patient, uh, you know, the patient fingers, you know, if they have weak fingers, they normally use this to stimulate their fingers and they use this to, 
to stick it up on things like that. So I just want to show you that. And then also right over here, we got this very nice piece of equipment. All right, so normally what we normally do is that when the patient come like that, we normally, you know, with a wheelchair, we stand them up, or if the patient can walk, they will normally come, sit right over here, we turn this around, we turn this around, we put their foot in here, put their foot in here, you know, and they can do their exercise. This is a very, very good piece of equipment. And this will tell you the time, it will tell you how many kilometers you have gone, and everything. You know, it work your arm and also your leg. Very, very good piece of equipment. So this is one of our equipment that we have over here at the arm facilities, okay? And then the next one I want to show you is this one. This is one of my favorite machines, all right? And you can use this. This is, uh... so let's say for example, if the patient is ambulating, you know, you can use this and you just put this back right in here. Okay? You can carry this all the way. And you can like this. And the patient is sick in this and do their exercise. Okay? But one thing that I really like about this machine is that if the patient is in a wheelchair, Okay, if a patient is sitting in the wheelchair, what you normally do is that you just... So let's say for example, a patient is sitting in the wheelchair. So what you normally do is that you just move the patient in here, like that. And move the patient closer, like that wheelchair, like the brake. Put the patient foot in there, and the patient is working. Easy as this. <laughs> <laughs> I love this machine. That's one of my favorite machines, you know, in here. Okay? So this one over here is very good for patients that cannot really stand up and things like that. All right. <clears throat> the one of our machines is right over here. This is made for occupational therapy. So normally what they normally do is that they will come right over here, put the patient close to this. Like the patient wheelchair, and the patient will, will start working on their arm. Okay? And they can add resisting as all the way up to 10, 10 pounds or even more. And the patient can work. And also they can move backwards. You see? Yeah. And I'm telling you, some patients cannot even do this for five minutes. Some of them, five minutes is too much for them, and they start. And they have to stop and rest. Some of them three minutes too much, but normally we normally do this for about 15 minutes. Yeah, normally 15 minutes, and that's it. All right. And then the next one, one of my second favorite after that machine over there. This is my second favorite. This machine is made for for stroke patients, patients that have stroke. And one thing I like about this machine is there. If the patient cannot move their hand, or if they cannot move their, you know, their leg, this machine does that for them. It moves their legs and things like that. So you just put it on. You put the patient's feet, you know, in the machine, and you light them up. You see right here. You use that. You hold them up, and you hold them up on the other side. Okay, and then from there you set your parameters. So. If you want to do the leg, it's already set on the leg, or right there. And then over here is the pound. So you can pull two pounds, three pounds, whatever pound. Normally I do two three pounds, right in between there. And then from there, right over here is on the port. And then from there you press start. All right, so you see this machine? It's moving by itself. I'm not moving it. Some patients cannot move their legs after stroke. So normally this machine helps to stimulate their leg and move them around, okay? So as you can see, right here. And then also we normally encourage the patient to move, to move it, all right? And then the next one also, you can also switch it over. You can switch it over to the arm. So right over here, you can just switch that to the arm. You press start, 
And this is going to start moving by itself. You see, I'm not holding it. It's moving by itself. And then the patient can hold it and move. And this kind of like stimulate the patient to participate. All right? All right. So that's it with that. And then the next piece of equipment that I want to show, that I want to show you guys is this piece of equipment. This piece of equipment. I normally use this for patients that cannot stand up by themselves. Patients that cannot stand up by themselves. So this machine can stand them up. So let's say for example, you hook this up, right? So you hook this up right here. And then this one, you hook this one up. So normally like this, the patient is sitting. So you're gonna put this on the patient is sitting, okay? And you're gonna bring this in the middle of that. And you hook it up, you see what I'm doing? I'll hook this up, and the therapist will be using this to stand the patient up. So right here. So over here is to go up. So, so just see right over here, I'm gonna show you what this machine gonna do. Okay, so, okay, so it's this one, I'm sorry, so it's this one. So this machine is going to pull me up by myself. It's going to stand me up. So you put the patient in right here. Their feet against this right here. You're going to stand them up right here. You're going to stand them up. You see what I'm doing? And then the patient is right here. This is Q for patient that have stroke or other conditions that cannot stand up by themselves. And this, you're kind of like stimulating them to stand up on their feet. You know, they help do the rehab process. All right? So that's it with this machine. I'm going to take it down. And then also when the patient gets tired, you take them down. You just press. So the therapist is going to be controlling that. You just go right into your seat. Okay? So this is a very good piece of equipment that we normally use. And then also, <clears throat> right here, right over here we got a TeraBand. So these TeraBand depend on the colors, they have different resistance. Alright, so this one over here is not too bad. So for patient, they move like that, just to help with the exercise in every direction. Just a little bit resistant for them. All right. And then this here is a gill bell. So we normally put this on when patients are ambulating. Very, very important during the rehab process. Whenever we are ambulating patient, always, whenever you see a therapist ambulating a patient, they always put the bell on. Because this bell is very important. Uh, if the patient has a very poor balance, you know, and the patient is ambulating, let's say, for example, the patient is ambulating and will walk like this. The patient is on looking for water like this, and then they slip. Okay, they slip down. You know, instead of you grabbing the patient's arm, grabbing here or grabbing somewhere here, you're gonna hold them, you know, with the belt. Hold them with the belt to stabilize them. So that's the purpose of this belt. So we always use this, and most companies have all have uh, have made it a policy. For therapists to use this. So if you don't use this and a patient fall, normally you can get in serious trouble for that. Okay? So <clears throat> we got different kinds. We got a plastic kind over here. I like this plastic one better because you can clean it very easily. You can just take um, a wipe and wipe it. And normally what we normally do is that after use, like I think every other week or so, or I think I think actually every day, we normally send this to the laundry. And then I'm going to wash it up and clean it up properly for use. And one piece of equipment that I forgot to show you guys, there's a walker. So when the patient gets admitted, we normally assess them. If the patient uh, can ambulate, you know, by themselves, we normally give them a walker. And then, you know, they can use this walker to walk around the facility. If they cannot ambulate without an assisted device, we normally give them a walker. If the patient cannot ambulate, then of course, we give them a wheelchair like this. All right? We give them a wheelchair like this so that they can 
move around the facility. All right? So this is a walker. So this is a two-wheel walker. All right? And then the next thing we also have here that I want to show you guys is this, right over here. So we got different pounds. So over here, there's a two and a half pounds. And this one over here, I think it's about four pounds, if I'm not mistaken. This one go up to five. I think this is a five pound. So we use this. And this white one over here is two pounds. So we normally use this to put around the patient uh, anchor right over here. Put it on like this. Okay. And then we ask the patient to, to exercise. So it's just an extra resistance, almost like this therapy. All right, the patient exercise. And then also, the occupational therapist, normally what they normally do also is that they put this around the patient wrist, like there. And they ask the patient to exercise. Go up, like that, up, down, okay? And they can also put this on while the patient is doing other activities. <clears throat> and this is one of the pieces of equipment. I know most of you are familiar with this, okay? Okay, so this is the crutches. So if a patient or have an injury, sometimes like a motor vehicle accident, if the patient is very young, uh, they got a very good upper extremity, and they, uh, the only place that is affected is their lower extremity. Normally, you know, they use this. You know, they use this to walk. So you put this forward, and then you jump into it. Put this forward like that, and you move. All right, so we have this here. Normally, we don't use this over here. It just once in a while. And then also, uh, we have a can. So this is almost like an upgrade, an upgrade from the walker, from this walker. So if the patient is doing pretty well and they don't need this, but at the same time, you know, they cannot walk without an assisted device, then we normally give them either a walker like this or a straight walker like that. Okay? So normally we normally give them this because this one over here has a wide base, extra base. And, you know, extra support. This one is, it doesn't have too much of a support. So this one is really for high level patient. All right? And then, <clears throat> one thing, okay. One thing also that I want to show you guys is this piece of equipment right here. This one. All right? So this one over here is, uh, is uh, a stairs, staircase. So if a patient that you know patient going home that have stairs in their home who normally you know practice going up okay up and down the stairs they will practice going up and down the stairs they will practice and things like that so this is just an example so normally if a patient has an injury let's say for example the patient right leg is affected all right. So we normally tell them, and this is for everybody for that matter, you go up with the good, like that, up with the good, and then when you're coming down, you go down with the bad leg, the affected leg, you go down, okay? And then down, one step at a time, go down, all right? All right, so that's it with that. And then the next thing I want to show you is, uh, it's also right over here. We got this uh, oxygen machine for patients that are on oxygen. So we have these machines over here. We got this one here, and we got that one over there. So when a patient come in here, we know how to connect them, you know, to the oxygen right there. We put it on. You know, we put it on, and then we connect that to right here. We connect that tube right here, and they receive oxygen from right in here. I also want to show one of you here is this door. Uh, whenever we have patients that, you know, are going home, you know, we're not from the outside, uh, right over here, okay? So, you know, there's a very, very nice place as you can see, it's so pretty. So we bring patients out here, you know, we do that therapy from out here. So for, uh, for example, that, um, how you call it, the staircase that I show you uh, in there, you know a few minutes ago so we can do the same thing right here also right over here so 
we train the patient how to go up and down the stairs from right here and then also you know uh, if they have uh, their wheelchair we also train them on how to you know roll their wheelchair from right here like that okay so this is a very beautiful facility guys so so beautiful yeah so this is just a typical you know nursing home but this uh this facility is just extraordinary i love this facility they got so much even you know the architectural design the decoration inside outside the landscaping is just so 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 beautiful so i just want to share one of you that so we also use this area like for example right here you know there's a gazebo you know we bring patients out here you know for for activities like for example if they have you know barbecue that's the barbecue machine right over there you know uh we teach patients how to barbecue you know at their home if they have to barbecue we also bring them over here you know sit them over here you know uh, with the cold breeze while they're doing their therapy so this is just you know a common example of a beautiful 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 facility so i love i love this facility man beautiful place so um if you want to come here or if you you know looking for a place to send your family members you know just let me know and now we uh, send you the name of the facility but this facility is just extraordinary they have some very good therapists very good therapists that work here full time all right so i just come over here once in a while this is one of my facilities that i come to once in a while so i'm already stationed here all right so i just want to show you beautiful facility so they're just the um the, uh, this is not the front of the building. The front of the building is on the other side. Front of the building is on the other side. But this is just, you know, the side of the building where they have the gazebo. Patient can come out directly from the therapy gym, uh, from the therapy gym. So the therapy gym is right here. All right. So, all right, guys. So this is the front of this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful building, man. Beautiful building. This is the front of it. All right. So. Right over here, I'm just gonna show you guys this beautiful building. So that's the front, that's the entrance of this beautiful building. I mean, beautiful facility. Uh, sorry, beautiful facility. So that's the entrance of it. Uh, okay, yeah. I love this facility. Now, I've been coming here now for, for a while. This is one of my buildings that I normally visit. All right, so yeah, but let me all, uh, and this is the parking lot. I'm gonna turn the camera around very quickly and then show you guys the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So this is the building. Yeah. So this is where the ambulance, the mother pick up patients. So if there's an emergency, a patient need to go to the hospital, you know, the um, the ambulance, the mother come right over here, right under this chair right here, and then they bring the patient outside from that door right there. So that's the entrance to this facility. All right. Yeah, it's a beautiful facility, man. I love it. I've been coming here now for a while, just as I said earlier. All right. So once again, um, this is Bonnie Connie. Welcome to Bonnie to the 60. If you haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please subscribe. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell uh, so that you can be informed whenever we upload videos. Okay. All right, so the purpose of this video today is to really educate people about the process, you know, of, of rehab, you know, when the patient gets discharged from the facility. So normally, you know, uh, when the patient go to the hospital due to injury, due to illness or, or anything for that matter, you know, the doctor will determine if the patient needs to go to, you know, a high level rehab or a low level rehab. So the, uh, the low level rehab is the skilled nursing facility. And then a very high level rehab would be like some of the big, big, you know, uh, rehab, you know, facility or rehab hospital. Then it will send the patient to those rehab hospitals and the patient will, you know, perform their, you know, their rehab. But most of the time, I would say maybe 70% of the time, doctors normally send patients to the skilled nursing facility. The skilled nursing facility, uh, they have, um, like, uh, they have uh, some areas that are long-term patients, patients that are still there. For nursing care you know continuous you know uh, nursing care and then they have the short term uh, you know wing of the facility so those short term patients are people from the hospital who are only um, you know in at that facility for rehab so they will put them on the on the rehab hall and then those patients will receive rehab and then from there either those patients will go home they go to uh, assisted living 
all go to you know independent living facility you know so but normally you know they would just come to the facility like that just for maybe a month or less and then from there you know they go some some patients still a little bit longer though you know so today i just want to kind of like you know bring you you know just to at least you know educate every one of you about the process so again uh when the patient come from the facility when they get i mean come from the hospital and they get to the school nursing facility uh, the rehab department, normally the rehab, uh, the rehab department, and this is not to this facility. I'm just saying overall, generally, uh, a patient uh, or the rehab department is required to, to assess the patient within 72 hours. So 72 hours, that's about three days. So normally that happens within the day, the same day the patient gets admitted, we normally evaluate the patient. Or normally the next day, you know, we evaluate the patient. But in... In, in some instances, sometimes we go up to 30 days, you know, before we evaluate the patient. And then normally when the therapist go, the therapist will assess the patient to see what the patient is capable of doing at that moment uh, and what the patient is not capable of doing. And then also they look at the prior level, they call the family, talk to the family, you know, what was this patient doing prior to going to the hospital? Or sometimes they even talk to the patient if the patient is cognitively, you know, uh, well to, to tell them exactly you know the prior level and then from there they will base the patient goals according to the prior level but if the patient case is very severe then they will try to have a short-term goal and a long-term goal so the short-term goal will focus on little things that the patient can do within the shortest time and then before they start working on the long-term goal so it's almost like a baby when a baby you know uh, is in the process of walking the first thing they do is to learn how to crawl and then after that, they start holding on to stuff to, to walk, you know, I mean, start holding on to things to stand up. And then from there, you know, they start walking. So the short-term goal is almost like crawling and standing. And then the long-term goal would be to walk. So, you know, things like that. Just That's just an example of how, you know, we, uh, we set the patient goals. So uh, when the therapist, so the evaluating therapist will go in there, assess the patient, and come up with a... Uh, uh, with a plan of care for the patient, all right? And then whoever comes next to treat that patient will follow that plan of care. So whatever that therapist put down, you know, as a plan of care, that's what everybody else is going to follow when they come next until the patient next assessment, okay? The patient next assessment, and then, you know, another therapist or that initial therapy that did the evaluation will determine if the patient needs to go to another level or not, all right? So once again, thank you so much for watching Vanity 360. I can thank you so much for joining Vanity 360. Bye-bye.